Welcome to Mac Helpers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add graphs into a Pages document. Graphs are really cool and quite simple to use, just like most things in Pages, but let's go ahead and show you exactly how to do it. The first thing is go ahead and click the plus sign there, and the graphs right there just looks like a bar graph here. And so you got two options here. Whoops, sorry about that. You got your 2D, your 3D, and your interactive graphs. And so let's go ahead and we'll do a 2D graph, and then I'll show you how to turn that right into a 3D graph. So let's go ahead and just click the simple bar graph. And so you can move it around, adjust the size, just like you do with any other media. And then it's already kind of broken it up into two different sections for you. So you got region one and a region two. And so to, to really start doing this, let's go ahead and just click on it. And then just like before, you want to change how it looks. So let's go ahead and click the, the, the paintbrush. So you got your chart. You go, let's go to your chart options. You can turn your chart title on. Bam, just throws a title right in there for you. And you could say whether you want on the left, middle justified if you got a long section or you just want it centered. Centered I think looks best. Your legend that's going to be your region 1 and region 2 uh, that's kind of nice just to have on your graph and then you go ahead and click your border which will add a little border to it. You can change your font size, make it larger, make it smaller pretty basic stuff and then you can value labels you can turn them where you want them off so let's go ahead and just click middle on there and then the number format is how you want it to do. So you can automatically add decimal points. See how it's automatically adding the extra decimal points? So let's just do one. Prefix, oops, geez, you don't want to have to do that. Prefix is just gonna be something that you can add. So that's like T. See how it says add, automatically added that T? And then you can add a suffix, which is to say, let's say it's like, this was all in milligrams, for example. See how it kind of automatically did that for you? I'm going to go ahead and delete that just because it kind of makes it messy, but I just wanted to show you exactly how to do that. And then your negative format, whether you wanted a minus or in parentheses. So that's kind of how you do that with the number format. And then your chart type is how you want it to look. So you can actually go through, so it's stacked, a 2D bar, 2D stacked, graph area. Let's go ahead and put it over there and make it a little bit smaller just so you can, so you can kind of see what's going on here. These are all part of the 2D chart options. Uh, and so you can go and change each specific one. And then you, well, you can actually turn it right into a 3D section from either this section or from this section over here. So let's go back to 2D. Or you go and make it into a 3D. And you can change all these different cool colors and different styles they have, different fonts and stuff like that. And it really allows you to look at, uh, makes it pretty cool. So let's uh, to go back to chart options. You're going to want to change it to a 3D. Let's do a different 3D. Let's do a 3D column. So however you want to do it to pick your style and stuff like, let's go to a 3D bar. This is, I mean, this is really cool because then you can really get a three-dimensional effect. So when you change it to a 3D, it gives you this little squiggly three-dimensional kind of thing. So when it's selected, you can just grab your finger, just press your finger in there, and you can really adjust how you look at the data. See how it's kind of cool, how it gives you the shadow back there? And it really just kind of automatically adjusts for you to make it like the coolest looking way. So I, let's say I like how that looks. I think that looks pretty cool. So now we can go back to the paintbrush thing, and we can go to x-axis, and the value, see how it's 0, 25, so this is just going to show you the values and this is just for the x-axis. So you can change it specifically to the x-axis when you're on the chart section it does it for the whole chart as a whole. You can also go down to the y-axis which is going to give you kind of the same deal. Value scale settings, so it shows you the different steps which just means how many columns so you can just have it as two, so 0 to 50, 50 to 100, you can have 33 to 66, or you can do 25, and it's just the values in this chart specifically are only up to 100. So the maximum value just kind of automatically does it for you, but you can make it 500. See how now, see how small the graphs look? Now that doesn't make sense. So let's just go back here, and when you delete it all the way, it just makes it automatic. Click the little down arrow, bam, right back to normal. So. This is the log button. See how it changes that? 
Now let's go back to, let's go to the y-axis. So it's going to kind of give you the same kind of deal again, uh, except it's going to add a little bit different features. So those are the grid lines. Just an easier way to look at stuff. You can put your access name on there, category labels, which is cool, or you can have your series name. And then a range is just like uh, any other media sections. If you've got a lot of different media on there, you've got some text, you can uh, move it from front to back, or you can wrap around the text, depending on how you want to do it. So let's go back to here and change the colors. And let's go back to chart options. And so we kind of got, went over everything there. Now let's actually click on the text it's, or the, the table itself and now let's go into actually editing the data. So when you click on it once, it's going to allow you to bring that data in there. So let's say you want this, to, you needed to change this or so this is where you're adding all your data in. 28, 75, 96, we'll leave it at that. And you actually change this, so let's say this is, this is amount or just say, just say rainfall inches and if you click next it automatically does that for you so this would be um, sunny days I mean this I know this data doesn't make any sense right now but I just wanted to show you exactly how to do that and you click next which is kinda like the tab bar which in this section is gonna add another one there but you can go and click here and then change this or whoops five days in April next and then you just keep going next if all that's correct. You can also click up here and plot rows as series or plot columns as series. So it depends on which, if you want to switch the data or change it, depends on what you're trying to do or how you want to express your data. And you go ahead and click done. And there it kind of shows you what was going on with that graph. So now it makes more sense to kind of turn it this way. So that's pretty cool there. And then let's go ahead and show you how to go ahead and change these chart options Actually, let's just show you how to add a new chart. We'll go to an interactive chart here. So the interactive chart is pretty cool. Well, I'll go ahead and make this one really small. Oops. And so this is really cool if you wanted to, if you're really showing somebody on, like let's say you have this hooked up to a projector and you're at work showing somebody how to do this or in a class and you're showing your teacher how to do these things. So these are interactive graphs kind of show you, well, if we did this this month and this, this is what happened this month, this is what happened this month. So same kind of deal. So to edit data, it's going to be the same kind of deal, except let's say we'll just change this so you can really see a drastic difference. So when you're dragging through this again, 96, bam. It's really cool just to kind of show what the whole, I mean, just to be a little bit more interactive with your, with your, with your chart. And it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to do when you're, if you're printing this out as like an actual document where you really wouldn't use an interactive chart. But if you were turning in, let's say, if your teacher allowed you to turn in the pages document itself instead of printing it out and sending it as a PDF or things like that. But the interactive is really good when you're doing it, when you're actually sharing your screen or you're showing people firsthand, like in person, how to change these things. But that's pretty much it for the chart. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to give us a shout and at info at yourmachelpers.com with any questions or find us on Facebook, post it to our wall at facebook.com slash machelpers and we'll help you out any, any way we can. Thanks.